Welcome back to Pathfinder, uh, the Fall of White Cliff mini campaign. I'm Adrian and I'll be the Pathfinder DM for tonight. Uh, we are joined by five amazing players. We are down one person. Uh, Sammy is no longer playing Damus, uh, so he is now an NPC. I don't remember if I just said that last time. I think it was missed. But anyways, we do have everybody else in the crew. So just... Um, I, rather than do an individual character introduction, I'll just kind of read out who's who, and then we'll jump right back into the game. So we have Avery, we have Corvantes, we have Ellie, Flora, and Grace. Um, and again, Damis is there with the party, but he is now controlled by myself, and we shall jump right back in. So when last we left our heroes, um, Whitecliff Castle had arrested all of your these party members for various reasons, with the exception of Grace and Flora. Uh, and they had made an uh, epic breakout of the jail and found a secret passageway uh, down into the smuggler docks below the castle. Uh, both Flora and Grace have come up from the smuggler docks, uh, having basically been dropped off by the smuggler Tavish um, in order to try to sneak into the castle and retrieve documents. While this has become very apparent, uh, now is not the best time to try to attempt that mission, as guards are swarming uh, after them. Uh, the party descends the staircase down from the trap door of the secret room down to where this kind of landing bay is where the smugglers are unloading all of their merchandise um, and so the camera kind of fades in on the the heroes as they're hustling down the staircase it winds back and forth transitioning from kind of a hewn stone carved staircase down into actual scaffolding lumbers and uh, wooden rails uh, as you kind of go back and forth down these some two two hundred some feet down uh, and I pass it to the characters to uh, take it from here this isn't where we were at the beginning of last game we went down a little bit you have no proof we're up here <laughs> You can uh, descend all the way down, or you can hang out there at the middle if you wanted to spy uh, down. You can see kind of the docks uh, are, they're lit because of kind of torches, and there's some on the, the main thoroughfare there. There are lanterns, which are posted on metal um, kind of towers uh, with hanging lanterns. So there's firelight uh, around all the docks, and then further down, you can see the mouth of the cavern. Um, there is light from the day uh, kind of spilling in through the distant kind of passageway. I want to confirm that there's no way to get out of here except for by boat or the way we came. Um, there's the trapdoor you just came from into the castle, and from here it looks like there's the docks, and that's mainly uh, everything that's down here. Once you get down, you could try to look for other um, passageways on like this side, but as far as you can see, there's just kind of this wharf. Um, and there's a couple dinghies and stuff parked there, or moored there rather, uh, which are used for whatever. It could be fishing, it could be just kind of towing barges in, uh, but they are all tied to the docks. Um, I, I would like to remind Corvantes that you do have a plus four to your AC from the last time, because that lasts for eight hours, uh, is it eight hours or 24 hours? Uh... That it lasts for one hour. So one just hour? a reminder, a reminder you have a plus four to your AC. Yep, that's still under my temporary. Thank you. Cool. That's it. If we have to convince anyone to get out of here, let me talk. Grace is gonna <laughs> Grace is gonna look back at um, Avery and kind of like give her a little bit of a confused look. Uh and then, can I roll a perception check to see how, like, if the environment has changed since the last time Grace and I came, uh, Flora and I came through? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can roll a perception. It's a total of 10. Okay, 10. Um, from the looks of it, it just looks uh, active as if they have moved a lot of the bar, like the, on the barge, a lot of the 
bins and boxes have been shuffled out from the cargo hold and onto the main deck, and now they're being moved from the main deck to the uh, wharf. But other than that, you don't. There's still kind of the three same knights. Um, they're wearing kind of the purple and gold delivery of the Castellan Rinkin, um, but they're they're the only kind of main guards. They are wearing shinier armor than any of the castle guards you have seen upstairs. These are closer to like knights. Okay. Flora will point out the ship to Corvantes as they're still walking and holding hands, unless Corvantes walks away from her. I'm sorry, I was unmuted on my stream and I was still muted in the Discord. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, Corvantes will definitely... We went over last time <laughs> the the unspoken episode. Um, we went over your kind of height and weight. So at this point, Corvantes would be like, come on, kid. And he would like kind of just pick you up, hammer like set down in like one hand. <laughs> pick you up and put you on his shoulder so you could ride up there and he'd be like and um from that he would start he would probably get down to the bottom of the stairs because he doesn't he wants to be on the deck level so if something's gonna happen he's right there okay are you trying to be any kind of stealthy like keeping to the shadows or are you just kind of going for it Corvage is just walking if someone sees him they see him that's that's how he's going right now Flora looks down at, looks behind her to Grace, kind of confused, but also excited to be on Corvantes' giant shoulder. Yeah, he's a bigger dude. Grace just shrugs from her, like, two foot nine, uh, her two foot four height. She's like, eh. But yeah, Corvantes would get down there. Okay. And... As you kind of disembark from the staircase onto the actual uh, docks itself, um, the guards, the two ones here, seem to be in discussion together. Um, let me turn her around. There is a third knight who is kind of wandering. The knight rolled a two on his or her perception, actually. Let me see the mini. That looks like a good guy to me. A very wide guy. This is very strange. Weird. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, with a two plus bonus, it's not going to see you guys right away. So you were able to kind of cluster down there. You have not been seen or noticed. Everybody's still kind of facing this direction. Are the two guards that are at the that are at the start of the docks, it, are they the same guards that yes. Flora and Grace passed before? Yep, um, they are. What about the, the one patrolling? Probably not. Um, the one patrolling, uh, I don't remember if you interacted with that one, but she's kind of roaming around, moving from up and down the docks. Um, it looks to be about the same, and it hasn't been really that much time since you came back up here, so it's unlikely that anybody's moved, really. Okay. Wait, who's the, the big guy who... White Cliff. Uh, Rinkin, Castellan Rinkin. Corvantes is definitely letting Avery lead the way. Avery or, Gr Avery or Grace. Flora is chewing Corvantes' ear up figuratively about how pretty it is outside. I and follow about right. the people on, on the ship. I follow right behind Grace. Grace is gonna puff out her chest and make a walk straight for the docks like she did before, her and Flora getting in. She's going that same path, getting out. Chest puffed and just walking straight for the exit. Okay. She's gonna keep pace then. Okay, as there's a, a swarm of you um, and walking, I need Grace, Ellie, and Avery. I think you're kind of all bleeding the area. I'm, I'm gonna actually ask for everybody to roll. Um, this is going to be either a bluff check, a diplomacy check, or if you want to try to do like an intimidation or perform, uh, you can tell me on what you want to roll, but bluff would be the default. I am trained in bluff for some reason. I will use diplomacy because my little 
My little tiefling girl is not about confrontation. I will use diplomacy as well because that's what I use to get by. So if they were to try to recognize me, I want to hold that same kind of posture and stance for myself. Okay, I will give yeah, Grace. Like... Sorry, Grace, you can have a situational plus two to your bonus because of that. Okay. I would like to following with diplomacy because I'm not even bluffing. I'm just, I'm here. You're going to let me through. Okay. And Corvantes? Uh, I would like to roll intimidation. I'm a big buff dude carrying my hammer in one hand and there's a small child on my shoulder. Okay. I don't think I look the most kindly, but he is wearing a smile on his face, but it doesn't seem that it's a true like happiness. It's cold. If this goes against you, it's going to be really funny because it's just like, I'm carrying a small child, I'm not scary. Or, I'm scary and carrying a small child. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Either way doesn't look good, does it? Eh, to it okay. now. No, so let's uh, bring out the rolls. If anyone's rolling physical dice, just kind of uh, type your result in chat, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, my, yes. my, roll will in, my roll will include the plus two. Okay. Should get my real dice out. I got Laura a six of modifiers. Laura's best diplomat. <laughs> so this is very close. Corvantes, um, the guard who, kind of across from you um, as you're kind of walking down, kind of approaches hand on the shaft of this giant Zweihander sword style uh, blade, uh, which is kind of sheathed in a uh, kind of almost a, sh a chest rig, almost because of how big it is. Um, but she kind of looks at you and kind of squints, uh, and there's a moment kind of where you almost suspect she's going to draw on you, and you're almost ready to lift your Warhammer too, but then uh, she kind of looks up and sees Flora, and something about this kid, um, you kind of look at her and, and completely almost disarm her for a second, and kind of her hand falls from the blade, and you just kind of saunter past to little. Grace, as um, you're approaching the docks, the two guards step forwards uh, and kind of not cross their their weapons or anything they've got spears they don't cross them uh but they just kind of block your path and say uh state your business and then the other one says oh no no they were they were just here yeah but they're with more people and they're gonna ask you who you are and what your business is business business as usual we came we got the stuff we're leaving okay um, they kind of step aside and kind of wave you past. Um, the other one next to you as you're passing um, holds up a hand up to Avery and Ellie, actually both of you, and just be like, we need your names. Ellie. Bora Zephyr. Then okay. she kind of steps aside. I guess these are all girls. I keep saying she. So all of three of you kind of pass through uh, Corvantes and Flora, I suppose. You just kind of follow after. Um, the other guard steps and watches you from behind. The orc, uh, Damis, is flagged here as well, and they kind of look him up and down. He says, they say, your name? Damis. And then they just uh, let him pass. <laughs> and so... Um, as you begin to walk up the docks, the third guard comes over, and you can see them kind of talking in, in kind of a hushed tone. I'll say Flora and Corvantes want to try to listen to see what they're saying. You can. Everybody else is out of earshot. Flora will listen. I hear something. Yeah. I roll... Oh, shoot. Hold on. My mic. I rolled a 15 plus... What is my perception bonus? Uh, plus four. That's a 19 for me. Okay. So, so yeah. Uh, Corvantes kind of turns and makes it even easier for Flora to hear as well. And you can hear the third guard is kind of whispering to the others. I don't know if that's right. What did you say their names were? And then they, then you hear them saying, um, Ellie. And then what was you, uh, for Avery, you gave your last name, right? I gave Midor or Zephyr. I, I never give my name to the guards. They don't know my name. Ellie. You said you yeah, told them your first name. No, no, no. Yeah. To, to the, the, the uh, who have. To the, when we were put in jail, they never got my name. No, you just asked now. The, the You told this guard. Yeah. Oh. I give them my nickname, not my real name. 
Yeah. So, but you overhear the guards kind of like the more suspicious one that was looking at Corvantes. It's like, what? I don't think this is right. Them going. I don't think we were. What were the names? And then you you hear them kind of recounting. So they knew um, Ellie, Bora, Zephyr, and Corvantes. Did you tell them your name? No. Or, Corvantes was walk. It was Damis. Okay. So they know they did. a couple of yours. They um, didn't ask Corvantes or Flora for their for their names. Corvantes just made his way past. Yep. Uh, and then they kind of stopped Damis at the end, and he told them. So um, are you're free to continue. Uh, what do you do? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry, your mic cut out. Sorry. No, I was just speaking really quietly because I was in character. Corvantes, did you hear what they were saying? He kind of leans a little bit towards you. Yeah, I heard. Just keep anyway, moving. We'll be fine. Remind, remind me why you all were here again? Uh, I'll remind you on the boat. There's like not to much to out. tell. We were just uh, in jail. <laughs> You're in. What are these Um. Corvantes looks over at Flora. I worship. I worship my own god, and they didn't like that. Well, that's Grace, kind of stupid. <laughs> yeah. As you uh, board the ship, um, you see this kind of spindly, noodly built figure of Tavish kind of uh, jumps over. He's wearing a tri-cornered hat and he just kind of takes it off and sets it down on um, the crates and he says, well, you're back already. What did it go well? Is he, is he part of the, is he part of uh, Flora's group or is he part of my group? So he is one of the, he's part of, so you would know him. You both would actually know him. He's one of the uh, gypsies uh, and he's involved with the smuggler ring. So uh, I forget exactly how your backstories worked out, but I think somebody was affiliated with the gypsies or- That or was knew. Flora. No, okay, Flora so, so it's Flora's. Flora so he would actually have said that to Flora then and kind of be eyeing you as you're on Corvantes's shoulder. I feel like maybe Corvantes has put Flora down, or is, is she still on Corvantes' shoulder? I just want to like clarify. If if you uh, asked or even motioned for you to hop down, Corvantes would have let you down, okay. and basically aided so that you didn't like fall all the way down. You just kind of fell like a quarter of a foot. To uh, your feet. Flora will sit, will uh, yell out, "Oh, hello, Tavish! We're back. We brought friends. Corvantes, can you put me down?" Whoa, whoa, whoa. And this time he's, he kind of bends down towards Grace. You have friends here. Are you bringing passengers? Um, workers. Help. Loaders, unloaders. Oh, I know. I can see what this is. This is, you, you know, you're seeking passage. He starts to kind of rub his hands and lick his lips. Oh, that's gonna cost you. I don't really run as uh, I'm not a taxi service. Flora will look up at Tavish and look it up at Corvantes and like push Corvantes to come down or like lean forward so she can whisper in his ear. He will just kind of like <laughs> he can't really lean forward. He more just kind of like goes down to a knee. Flora's gonna make Flora's gonna like, like hug him and say, "Careful." Tavish has this kind of like a slimy weasel. Very well. Important. Very well, but I suggest we hurry and we can negotiate once we're on our way. Oh, we still have cargo. We got plenty of time to negotiate. If you want to work, we can help with those boxes. And he points over at these crates here. And you can I, see, I see. Um, yeah, the crew is, is kind of making their way back to grab more. We're not going to have as much time as you think we are. And so I can I go start helping with the boxes? Yeah, if you want. Corvantes okay. would also like to go aid. Uh, Damis will also because he realizes the uh, gravity of the situation. Mm -hmm. Flora is going to um, look at Tavish and uh, go like kind of like uh, run with her arms kind of behind her to go help Corvantes however she can with her very tiny frame. <laughs> okay. How about uh, um, Grace? I would have, sorry, if Grace passes me, I would have her 
have the one guy finish up with any negotiations like ASAP because if he wants to get paid for this job, I'm not sure if he's been paid already. Are you talking about the worker guy or Damus? Uh, or who? Because there's a couple other sailors here. Or who are you talking Grace, about? Grace passed me. We passed each other. She went to the end of the ship, I think, um, before I started. And I told Grace that if they want to get paid for this, if they haven't already, it's probably better to get that done sooner rather than later. Grace gives you a very, very confused look, and she said, I'm, I'm not part of this crew. Okay. Okay. Uh, I would. I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know where to help, hon. And okay. She'll go to the edge of the ship, and she kind of like rests her rests her forearms on the edge of the ship, and looks over at the water, and just looks very, very bummed. Laura's gonna watch Corvantes start moving things. Okay. Um, you can all roll an athletics check. I think is what it would be, or no? That would be um. What would it be? Strength something. With my very small tiefling child body, could I in any way assist Corvantes, or do I just stand there and cheer him on? Um, they're pretty heavy crates. I'm not sure that. I mean, if you wanted to try to help, I think you would <laughs> to try to. Let's see. You could try to help him. Um, I, I could give you a bonus. What's your strength? Can Damus and myself do it together? Because I know Damus isn't particularly strong, and I'm not either. My strength is an eight. I can't do very much. I don't lift things. I'm more as far as to point things out. I will say if, if two people are teaming up, you can have some one person roll and have a plus two bonus. I will roll. I have a plus three. <laughs> yeah, Flora will just be there offering help. More to be supportive. She knows she's not okay. strong. I'm gonna just roll a, a strength check, I guess, with your ability score bonus. I don't see any strength-based skills for moving furniture type boxes. Strength 21 with bonuses. Seven plus two, because I'm helping Damus. <laughs> Unless Damus wants to roll. <laughs> uh, no, Damus is not going to roll. He will help you with your box. Um, okay. Corvantes moves some of the boxes over. Um, the other crew members who are kind of helping, they'll move some, some of these over too. Um, you're just about done, and um, you can see Tavis just kind of watching, watching you from the back of the boat, kind of twiddling his fingers and and thinking about kind of what he's going to do next. Uh, Grace is gonna call out to Flora. Flora, Flora, come here for a second. Flora, in the middle of helping Corvantes with another box, goes, "You got this, right? I'll be right back." And she'll run toward Grace. Like, let's yeah, go. Yeah. Back. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bye then. What's up, Flora, honey? How um, how much magic do you have left? Hope is very, very hurt. Everybody gets given hope one yet. That's, that's 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 true. That's true. All right, uh, uh, give me a minute, and um, Grace will sit down on the on the floor and slice her hand open and start uh, start drawing a sigil on the boat. And take okay. about a minute. Um, as you are doing that, and everybody else in the background is kind of still moving crates, Tavish begins to kind of run up, and he says. Whoa, 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 what are you doing with your witchcraft on my boat? Stop it! And he Tav looks like he's, uh, he's very Tav upset here drawing in, on the floor with their blood. Flora will, Flora will kind of start over his ear. No, no, Tav, you don't understand. Grace is kind of like a really bright dandelion. She just kind of leads Captain Hey, Tav shut, shut up, kid. None of your gibberish. I can't have a witch on my boat. By the way, that's funny that Tav says that because... Flora's class is actually a witch, so Flora's just yeah. Flora's just kind of confused. Witches don't use blood. That doesn't make sense. They already have inherent magic in their bodies. He looks flustered and looks at you. Meanwhile, in the back, uh, Corvantes, Ellie, and Damus have just finished helping out with the cargo, and it's now kind of cleared off the boat. Um, mm. What is Avery doing in the meantime? Watching. 
Okay, if you're watching, you can roll perception. Oh, I love you. Tavish, I understand that you're concerned about, about the detriment yes, to four. the integrity of your ship, but logically speaking, Grace has been nothing but accommodating and helpful in every way. I'm just trying to help her take care of one of her little buddies. Tavish, I believe we had a... Uh... Well, actually, before I talk to Tavish, I want to talk with the with the group of how much we can afford to pay to get off here. Okay, how much can you afford to pay? Um, I don't have any gold in my character sheet, but I know we were stealing gold, but I never put it in because I'm a silly. Uh, there Point was a death. Yeah. That was all with Bree. That was all with Bree? Yep. No, there was someone else who was stealing it off of the desk, too. Oh, that was probably Flora. Flora, Flora took some gold with her. I don't oh, know no, no, no. Oh. No, it was... Okay, so we went upstairs. We went and killed a guy. There was a bunch of gold on the secretary's desk. Grace, not Grace, um, Flora Brie. put a bunch yeah. in her bag. Sorry, Bree put a bunch in her bag. Um, and then someone else did too. I think it might have been Damis. Yep, it was yeah. Damis. Um, Does Damis, do you have money in his character sheet? I thought Flora, we all grabbed our gold back. Flora yeah, did pocket did a sack all of, of our gold. monies, but we never had anything that I saw for what we had previously to that. So I don't have anything in my character sheet because I, I don't know what I had before I got put in jail. Um, oh. I, I know exactly what I had still because I still had it marked down. I just had a mental note of you don't actually have that until we find it. Um, Adrian, we, we did get all our gold back, correct? Um, you got some of it back, I believe. I'm trying to remember. Damus, actually, I don't think he did. He's got six gold on his character sheet, which I think he's just picked up from something. It might have been okay. Flora who took the gold, because his gold that he'd been looking for was in the, the storage yeah. room. Flora, I'm took nine... to, Flora took someone's wallet in an earlier game, but she doesn't know whose it is, but she's got a, a ball full of money. Yeah. I'm 90% um, sure oh. that... Um... Oh, sorry, go Avery, ahead. Avery is going to call out the, like, clap her hands. Hey, let's go. Time is money. You got your stuff off the shift, let's pull anchor and set off. Tavish is going to kind of get distracted from um, Grace, who can continue with her ritual and just kind of finish that out without him noticing. He kind of stomps towards you, uh, and he says, Now, I don't know who you think you are, but this is my boat, and I give the orders here. You seem like you're in an awful hurry to be trying to boss me about. I'm just trying to save you some money here. Make things more efficient. Go ahead and roll persuasion with a plus two. Or diplomacy, sorry. Diplomacy? I would love to. Plus nine, wow. Oh, okay, well, a five, so 14. He starts to kind of lick his lips a little bit as you're saying that. He says, Oh, I can appreciate that. So, if you're all going to be a passenger on here, I don't need more crew. And he kind of like snaps his finger up in the air and he says, All aboard! And then the crew members start to hustle back over towards the boat. Uh, but then he turns back to the and says, You're going to need to pay. Corvantes would walk up. How much? Uh, and Adrian, is it okay? Because I guess we really don't know how much gold we actually have. Yeah. Um, that's true, and I actually don't have my notes in front of you for how you, much. So, what I had when I went in there, uh, after buying equipment and stuff like that, I had, I believe, hold on, I have it right here. Where is it? And I'm 90% sure somebody other than um, uh, Mackenzie's little character grabbed gold because I was behind them watching them do it. Yeah. I, I know I went in, I believe I went in there and grabbed my wallet, but I think you said some of it had already been nabbed. Um, okay. I, how I how much? Um, you had 130 gold pieces. I okay. think that I think that money was nabbed, all of it. But I am 90 percent certain that somebody other than Mackenzie's character got gold off that table. Yeah. So how? Which characters? So Damus, his character sheet has six, and so he's got six. Ellie, did you ever take any gold in the dungeon? Do you remember or the castle? I I don't think I did. Okay, Avery, and did you? I was, I wish I had. Sorry, what? Does Avery have any gold on her character sheet? Uh, lots. 
was it from starting gold or stuff that you looted? I can't remember. Oh. Flora did find that random sack of coins. If she hears the conversation, can she walk up to Tavish and pay for their way and pay their way on the ship? Um, you would be able to. Yeah, let me just figure out kind of the starting gold stuff because I want to make sure that we can just nail this down. So Avery and Corvantes, you both know how much you at least started with. How much do you both have? Yeah. Starting gold is whatever that is times ten. And... Yeah, whatever your roll is. So I only have 101, which is considerably a lot, but... I've got 135, um, currently, and, but a lot, a lot did go into buying my stuff. Okay. The, the conversation we had in that game was that Flora grabbed Domus's coin purse while he was looking for it. Yeah, so you have all of that. Uh, I'm just thinking of, in addition, how much uh, there are. Mm -hmm. So both Avery and Corvantes, you can just, I don't know if this is a retcon or not, but you can both have that total amount. So if that's 100 and what was Corvantes? So it was 100? 135. 135. So you can both have that much. Um, Ellie, you can, do you have a, any idea how much starting gold you would have? No, I'm looking it up right now. Okay, so if you don't know, you can just roll for it, and then you can have acquired that in the, like, the scri scribe's room. Um, Flora and Hope, sorry, Flora and Grace, rather, do you both have starting gold that you rolled already? 70 gold is the average. I... Not including the no. wallet I took from before, I do have on me, I don't know where, where to find it. I do have... I think I spent all mine. So I do have. I, have any. I do have okay. forty-one gold, eight silver, and nine copper, and whatever was in that wallet because we never figured it out. Okay. And then, does anybody happen to know how much gold a uh, Damus starts with? A Damus. Damus. Uh, he is a cleric. Um, path finder. You're probably gonna be the end to look in the book. There. Wait, I beat you. He started with 46 times 10. 140. So that is yeah. 8 as as fast as could. plus 2 is 10. <laughs> so he has 100 gold pieces in that gold coin purse. Okay. Oh, I figured it out for me. Because I specifically put it in my gear. Hmm. Okay. Found gold would be an addition, so you'd have an extra 24 including my starting so you so you're gonna have found your starting gold on that scripes desk okay. so awesome. you have it so congratulations payday money yay avery does notice um the guard is missing um and tavish is kind of trying to calculate how much it's, uh, you can tell he's almost thinking about like where is he gonna take you like his, his next um, location that he was supposed to go to, he might be thinking about changing his route now. Uh, and so he's going to kind of say, how far do you want to go? Uh, I can take you to Snakeport or Bell Rock. As a, as a war priest, would I know either of those... Have I ever preached in either of those locations to those... Do I even ring a bell? You can roll a knowledge, geography, or locale, if you have a, either see. of those. Let me see. Uh, I have none of the knowledges currently. I need to put my next couple ranks into okay. engineering. I, uh, I actually do have a rank in... I'm curious if Laura, with her knowledge of history, hears this conversation and can weigh in. Yeah, you can all, you can also, as you're hearing this, and because you're familiar with Tavish, you can tell that he's kind of a, a greedy opportunist a little bit. Uh, not too great of morals, you might say. Um, you can kind of participate or try to persuade him with the coin thing as well in a minute. But with those locations, um, you would know that because of where he's from, um, he belongs to a gypsy kind of yeah. not uh i can't think of the word 
like a clique of gypsies, whatever they're called. Coven? Coven, no, maybe? Coven, oh, that's coven, worse. That's coven is ha- witches. Hags. <laughs> um, but you get what I mean. Caravan? A caravan? caravan. Maybe that's the right word. Um, he would probably live in a town that's closer to Bellrock, which is kind of more northwest. Or sorry, northeast. Okay. No, sorry, uh, it is northwest. My geography is terrible. All good. Mine, mine oh. is too. Mine's bloody horrible. But can I roll for knowledge nature to see where I would rather go? That's like nature nearby, or would that um, not work? You can roll for nature, but it's not going to be about where those uh, two locations are. Okay, then it's pointless. Flora will excuse uh, herself oh. from a conversation with uh, Grace and Hope and go talk to Tavish. After hearing what he was saying, can I roll history real quick about the places? Mm-hmm. If, if as long as you're trained in it, yes. Oh, I got, I, I do have a uh, knowledge local, and I got a 20 total. Okay, so for both of you, so Flora, uh, you're hearing these cities. Uh, Snakeport is over in the Smuggler's Islands. Uh, it's probably a lot more of a rougher city, but further out of the reach of White Cliff uh, and the Castellan. So if you're trying to get away from him, that's probably a, kind of a better choice. Bellrock is north and a bit west. It's going so a lot further up the coast. It's a further trip, um, and it is uh, still within the domain of Whitecliff. Did you see Bellrock, Mr. Tavish? Yeah, I can go north to Bellrock. Which one was the place that's out of White Castle's control? Was it Bellrock? Uh, it was Sneakport. Bellrock? Oh, because, I don't know, I kind of like it to go in the state port. And I don't know if they can cover it, but, and uh, if anybody wants to intervene because Flora's just a sweet little girl trying to help, she'll pull out the bag of coins. Corvantes, before you get to pull it out, be like, hold on. Little ones do not pay. How much to get all of us? As they say, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. How much you get us a snake for? Tavish is kind of like looking into the so he's calculating. There are six of you. And I am consulting something. I can hear maths happening. <laughs> it worries me. <laughs> I'm trying to find the skill that's for bartering. What would be a bartering skill? Diplomacy. Um, yeah. Uh, so I don't yeah. Also, also, is it Grace part of the crew because she just hangs out with the gypsies so she doesn't have to that she's an orphan? Yeah, he's not going to charge you for yours, uh, for Flora, but Grace, he would. Grace probably already paid. Yeah, wouldn't Grace have already paid, knowing that you're going there and back? Yes, but the route's changing. Well, Corvantes has it covered. Good. Grace is too busy hugging Hope and looking like she's about to cry. Flora Cor- is Cor- looking at Corvantes' puzzle because he wants to help and doesn't get why Corvantes won't let her. Corvantes has definitely taken a look up, sees Hope, and if anyone looks at him, there's a visible shudder to him. Just like, mm, thought you were dead. Damn it. <laughs> oh, um, Tavish speaks up after a moment. He says, for the five of you, it'd be about Nine silver each, that's five times nine, and be about 45 silver. How about I just give you a gold piece? He blinks. Five gold. What's the, isn't, same exchange rate. What's, what's the exchange rate? Is it 10 per? It's 10 per. Oh, I thought it was 100 per. I'm sorry. My You offered him less. One, everybody else for bartering though. Board. Good for bartering. Yeah, yeah, no, I got him the five, which is I I'll look at Brandy, I go, sorry, but been a while since I've been doing math. Been in the monastery. I will I will give you your five and I'll tack one on as good favor and so that we both have an agreement that you will get me and my friends here safely. He will, uh, hold out his hand. Corvantes will. There, there's just, like, a pouch on the side, and he reaches in, pulls out six, and just will drop it into his hand. 
Uh, he g- can't happily collects the five gold, uh, and then he kind of snaps his finger in the air. Actually, right, it's ra- a la- rather loud snap, like he does this a lot. And the crew begins to uh, bustle back and forth and get things, the ship ready for sail. Um, you hear kind of a uh, noise from the back as there seems to be uh, a bunch of thuds and footsteps of people running down the steps. Anything I can do to help, Tavish? To get us going faster, as Avery so kindly explained, time is money. Uh, we grab an oar. We, we'll have to row ourselves out of the uh, out of the, the cove. I grab said oar and go to said location. I'll say it's here. Yep. Or... And then all the crew are just going to kind of line up there on the edge. Have uh, Grace, have you um, summoned your hope in at all during the boat trip here? Um, at she probably arrived with hope. Okay, so he Tavish is probably not super surprised then when there's this held hound just sitting over there with Grace uh, on He's the. He's probably app. more surprised at the process of of hope arriving because she would have walked up with hope, but yeah. Um, but not have ever summoned her on the boat. Yeah, so he's uh, just kind of like looks at you guys on the very back and just kind of like cringes as he sees kind of the the very scary canine appearance. Um, so you know, Damus is going to have a seat with the oars. It looks like uh, both Ellie and Corvantes are. The ship is beginning to set off, and you can see guards are starting to um, pour down the steps up here. I don't have minis for them, so I'll just put these guys here. And then I, I have... Uh, I have one question. Yep. Because <laughs> I have Crate Water. As we're leaving, uh, could Corvantes run to the back of the boat and be like, I'll be right back, and continually like over and over and over cast create water because it takes approximately six seconds to mm-hmm. do a turn you do it I once per like, turn i feel like it would be more like peeing off the back of a boat than propelling a forward <laughs> well, what are you what are you trying to do what's the purpose oh no he he is very much trying to propel them um but he would also do some of it onto the dock so that maybe make it a little slipperier like he did before <laughs> just like slip and okay. slide boys <laughs> okay yeah you avery, can do that okay avery is watching out for any um suspicious uh guards walking towards so she can just wave. yeah um yeah. you uh, you see that there's actually a whole bunch more of the town or the castle guards starting to storm down the stairs uh led by one of those knights um, and you can hear in the distance her shouting, stop the ship. Uh, and at that point, these two guards kind of see what's happening and start to run towards the ship. How far uh, out is the ship at this point? Uh, it is disembarking. So the, the oars are kind of being lowered and shoving off. Corvantes is uh, standing on the side of the ship at this point with the, would... the, the boards are so close together that if you are forcing the water down, it's kind of forcing the boat away, kind of like a an extra push so you've detached from the from the docks uh by a couple feet but these two guards are starting to Is run Corvantes down on the other end now at this point Corvantes he, would be about here okay yeah he'd be kind of right alongside us the the boat is shoving off switch those people around um can i tell tavish um two extra gold in it if you don't listen to them he kind of looks from Ellie over to the guards, and I need you to roll a persuasion check. Oh, gosh. With two gold, um, you can roll with a plus two. As he uh, is uh, considering, like, the guards, they're kind of a big piece of his business, is doing stuff for the Castellan. Uh, what What am I rolling? Uh, uh, diplomacy, I'm here. sorry. Ooh. Um, that's so not right. A, so plus two is nine. That is right. Oh, oh, there it is. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. So um, he seems to be pausing, and then he's going to kind of snap his fingers again and say, "Oh, everybody, settle Four. down." Cor- Four. Cor- Cor- Corvantes turns around. Twenty gold if you get us the hell out of here. Flora hears all the yelling. Dragonfly, what's going on? Why is everyone uh, throwing money around? 
Get, get the ship out. Get the ship out. <laughs> and, and then, uh... Cor Corvantes knows how to be like, no, 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 we're leaving. Let's go. Uh, he is actually going to run up next to Avery as these ghoul, as the guards are getting kind of within earshot. Uh, and they say, stop the ship. And he says, he shouts back over uh, the railing. Tell the Castellan we'll be back in a week. And then he, he um, tries to duck out of sight. <laughs> cool. And Avery cool. will be off the ship, waving at them. Florence is confused and overwhelmed by everything happening because everyone's like running back and forth, rowing the boat, yelling about money. People are yelling from below the boat, and she's just there trying to get answers, and no one's listening because she's just there, puzzled as hell. <laughs> uh, hello, what's going on, money? What? Grace. Uh, Grace will wave at you. Grace will wave at you from the back of the boat, trying to wave Flora over. And um, Hope like looks over at Flora, and her tail just starts like banging against the against the wood of the ship in excitement that Flora's coming over. Like bang, bang, bang. And the closer she gets, the more the tail wags. <gasps> Flora will walk back over. Grace, everyone was yelling about money, and there were people yelling from the boat, and they were trying back and forth. It didn't make any sense. Oh, it's 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 fine. It's fine, dear. And hope will hope will look over at her and say, say, oh, don't worry, everything is fine. But you know what isn't fine right now? What? My belly needs scratched. And she will like lay down on the ground and like roll over and show her belly. <laughs> Flora, logically, I feel like I should be more involved with the situation hand back there. But hope starts. Oh, my puppies are so cute. <laughs> Flores to go, but, but, puppy. <laughs> it just starts to scratch his belly. <laughs> With both hands. Are you guys on top deck or below deck? We're top, on top deck. Corvantes looks over, just kind of shakes his head, like, hell owls. Don't understand him. Looks, looks back at the guards and just starts waving, but he's got the bird held high and proud as he's waving to him. <laughs> yeah, the guards uh, begin shouting and, and kind of screaming at you a little bit. Um, the, there's more guards approaching the, the two knights that were standing there. They are just kind of frozen in place. They're not willing to jump in the water or anything. They just watch you kind of go. And as soon as the other guards uh, from the tower are starting to arrive, they all start piling into the three rowboats. And then... Oh. This is a placeholder art while I try to fix Avery. Oh, that's cute. Wait. What? The... This is oh. so cool. Okay. There's no way that the rowboats can outrun us, though. Um, you are kind of not... There's no sail wind in your ship as the big uh, kind of barge merchant vessel is kind of getting rowed and kind of pushed out. The three skiffs, the little rowboats, uh, they're filled with uh, four soldiers all of which are at the oars. Um, so there's 12 of them total starting to give chase. But as you are getting towards this, the mouth of the cave, it will look like they will overtake you. At least one of them will at a time, just because of the the size of the passageway. There's not a lot of room for them to get up behind you or around you, just behind. Um, but it looks like there's going to be a couple of the boats uh, giving chase. McTavish kind of been, or not McTavish, his name is just Tavish. But he uh, leans over to, I guess it'd be Corvantes, since you're the one who's offering so much gold. And he's like, what did you do to them? Why are they after you so much? Corvantes looks him in the eye and goes, I believe in my own god. They don't like that very much. I'm a priest. Oh, God. Well, they're going to they're gonna board us. What do you want me to do? You point. Where's the Can boat? Can I daze the boats? Um, the boats are inanimate objects. There are four oh, soldiers sorry, the boats, per people, boat. People, the people on the boat, so they can't see. Yeah, what's your range on the spell? Um. Oh, it's it's only twenty five plus five feet per two levels. Okay. So you can so, wait till they're within twenty five feet. They're. Uh, you can just kind of hold that. Um. Okay. If that's the case, uh, I'll ask. Should I? Minutes meteors the boat. See if that'll, you know, put a hole in it. Why don't we just put water in it? Oh, that's a good <laughs> idea. Corvantes holds up a hand and create water starts to he starts like 
showing the Cray water spell, like, what, why don't we just make them sink from water? What's the <laughs> distance on the make water? Uh, create water. I just gotta get it above them. So as long as they're semi-close. Uh, create or destroy. Here it While is. That up, Grace is gonna leave Hope's side as Flora is scratching Hope and knowing full well that Flora is finally distracted. She's going to go over to Corvantis and pull her short boat off her back and and say if you want to add more water to the boat I'll make a hole Corv Corvantis has like a ball of water pretty much just yeah. held above his hand with his magic and he goes all I gotta do is get to the side of the boat they need to be within 25 feet of the boat and I got them. get to the back of the boat yeah Corvantis would go to the back of the boat and just kind of would Corvantis I ask that because hope is there Even Can I if both hopes... see how well I'm scratching Hope's belly? So, <laughs> yes, please. What do I roll for that? A uh, sleight of hand. Um, as you are talking about sinking these boats, uh, Tavish is almost going ballistic behind you, and he's like, "You can't attack the guards. You'll be hanged." We're not attacking them. We're attacking their boat well oh, not yes you are if you did that to my boat i'd consider it an attack you're in water what's the difference about water being in it corvon corvon just looks at him what's the problem they they are coming to attack us are they not tavish i don't know you're gonna get us hanged no uh if anyone's hanged it'll be me and besides i'll be fine go show the ori uh, also, Kenzie, to answer your question, yes, Corvantis would. Corvantis does not like the fact that there's a hellhound there, but when it comes to this, this is survival. He doesn't care who he's near. This okay. is not one of those points where he's going to value that over it. Okie dokie. You guys, I will say, I'll remind you that Flora's an empath, and because of her witch abilities, she feels all the stress of the situation, so she's just scratching hope even harder, trying to ignore it. <laughs> because she doesn't, she doesn't like what she calls the weird, painful, spiky feeling. Yep, and uh, Tavish is emitting so much stress right now. Laura's just like, like leaned against Hope, like on the ground, just like scratching that part between the thigh and the stomach, just just, just watching Hope's leg like shake back and forth. Okay. People are so loud sometimes. Hope, why can't it be like you and just enjoy belly scratches? So the first boat uh, is almost upon you, and it looks like um, the, the two in the front kind of lift their oars up and kind of set them down uh, inside the boat and kind of draw their swords uh, and then kind of look like they're about to climb up the ship. Uh, when Ellie, you just hold out your hand and describe as days goes off and one of them kind of gets stunned. Ellie? Sorry, I am muted. That is why. Uh, flare goes off. Yep. That goes off when they get within 25 feet, yep. which is the same distance, which is when the water gets added, but they wouldn't be ready to board yet at that point. No, nope, they're, they're standing at the prow of the boat because they, they have enough momentum to kind of close the distance, and it looks like the front two are about to try to like jump over to the ship when you stun one. So he kind of gets dazed. Um, I will roll his save to see if he falls out of the boat or not. He does not. He, he maintains his position, but he kind of like holds his head as he gets dazed. And then uh, Corvantis, I imagine That's you are casting yours as well. It's not one. Just one person. Yeah. So there's four in the boat. Um, I can put tokens on for them, I suppose. Um, but there's four in the boat, two in the front that are standing up trying to um, get within distance. And then uh, if you want to, or you, I guess create water is not really a damage spell, so it just kind of goes off. Um, and then how about you roll 1d4? 1d4, okay. I rolled a one. Okay, um, so I will roll a check for him again. Um, it splashes over the guard on the right, which is not the stunned one. He falls into the water and the boat kind of pools a little bit but it does not sink. 
Um, the knights uh, kind of recover from that a little bit, and they do not make any attempt into the um, into board this round. Damis is still rowing uh, with the crew. Uh, Avery, what are you doing? I'll be ready to stand if they if they really get their way up here. Okay, so you draw your your blade, or do you keep it sheathed? I don't know. Keep it sheathed until they're walking up. Okay, um, Tavish uh, is walking back down. Kind of can't believe what's happening, but he tells everybody, "Roll faster! Roll faster! Get us into the open!" Um, and then Grace and Flora, what do you do? And hope. Um, Grace wanted to take a shot as Corvantes uh, let off his water. Okay, yeah, we'll go for it. It's all um, being, so, uh, are you shooting at the boat or the knights? Um, I want to take a shot at the one that got um, flared. Okay, yeah, go for it. You have, because uh, he's sort of stunned. I don't remember if you get an advantage or anything, but I'll give you a plus two because he's standing out in the open. Uh, and even though the days is didn't knock him out of the boat or anything. Uh, he's very easy target. Okay. This is gonna, this roll will include the plus two. Yep. That's a seven. Okay. So it whistles over his shoulder a uh, warning okay. shot and uh, splashes into the water behind. Um, the, the boat seems to be recovered a little bit. Uh, one of the knights is kind of floundering. Uh, and because he's wearing armor, he's having a trouble sinking or uh, swimming. So the boat actually uh, kind of aborts and swims over to, or like grows over to him, and they try to hoist him back in. Um, the dazed knight recovers and actually lifts up his shield from where it was down in the bottom of the thing and tries to like shield. And he shouts, "Watch out!" as the second rowboat kind of overtakes and comes up from behind. Are you all doing basically the same thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so, but I, I wanted to clarify, I, I used flare, not daze. Uh, you rolled daze. Did I roll daze? No. Oh, you did a second one for I flare. Rolled, I, I rolled flare. I'm sorry. Did I? It's still a burst of light, which would make them dazed, so everything would still count. Yeah, okay. Cool, cool. Flora, yeah, I, I is, Flora is sitting, she's learned from her time with Tavish that she does one thing well, Wait, wait on the side in case someone needs help, which in Flora's case is healing. So she's over there with hope, with hope, watching everything happen. Unless hope is over there being offensive, because I do have, I do have hex up. I haven't used it on Ellie or Avery, and then, and then I do have one more cure light wound spell slot. So if anybody needs heals or to be stabilized, Flora's here. Okay, so you're just kind of on standby. Yeah. So there's a. Of course, the must must do. Um, the second rowboat kind of passes the first as they're kind of retrieving their fallen comrade in the water, and then um, the two guards in the front kind of ready themselves, look like they're trying to balance a little, a little bit more. Uh, another flare and create water go off, I presume. Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Um, so the first one resists uh, the flare a little bit, kind of hides behind his shield. But as the water just starts to dump out, another of the guards falls into the water and is uh, now floundering. Um, also, Adrian, if anybody fails my forti fortitude that negates it, um, they are dazzled for a minute, not just a, a round. Okay. That's very good to know, because if they fall out of the boat, then they might like actually drown. So... Kind of the same thing happens. The second boat pulls aside to try to retrieve the guy who got splashed out from the create water. And the third boat comes to take its place. These ones all look a lot more like hunched over. They have a sword drawn already. Um, and they are there. Actually, I'll, I think I might have missed. Did Grace, did you shoot another arrow at one of those? Um, yes. Or are you holding she, fire? Uh, she's going to hold fire until someone looks like they're going to start to get on the boat, and that's what she's going to fire, and then she's going to use her movement to retreat back. Okay, so you're basically, if someone starts to get to, onto the boat and climb up, that's when you're taking... Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So, that's uh, also when I remove my... Or 
unsheathe my rapier and take a, an attack. Okay, perfect. So you're on standby. So you have tier three is Flora getting ready to heal. Tier two is Grace and Avery ready to take out anybody trying to get on the ship. And tier one is Ellie and Corvantes trying to prevent people from getting within reach of the ship. Uh, and as the third rowboat comes in, you see another four of the guards. Um, they poise at the edge, ready to kind of leap, and you can roll your spells again. Technically, I don't need to roll Actually, right you're in. right. It's me rolling two Ds, yeah. two 20s. So both of those, I think your DCs are 13. Mine's a 13. So this one gets uh, flared, and it is um, kind of bass stumbling backwards. He falls out of the boat into the water, at the same time, a gust, uh, a burst of water uh, falls down and washes a second guard out. And I need you to actually roll 2d4 for me, Corvantes, because I forgot to do this for the second boat also. Gotcha. Uh, 2d4. I rolled a 4 and a 2. Okay. Um, we'll say the 2 is for this boat, uh, and it's about half full of the water. Forget okay. the terrible drawings. The terrible drawings, but whatever. Um, with the 4... The entire boat begins to sink. And uh, this one is basically everybody's out of the boat because of uh, it capsizing, essentially. They all start shouting and are flustered and trying to not drown. The flared guy seems to disappear underneath the waves and, and is not seen. Um, the other two boats kind of circle around and try to go and save their comrades, but everything seems to be completely... Um, of diverted and you are able to clear out of the the cav uh, yeah the cavern into the open ocean there are soft waves kind of crashing up against the shore here and i will move you over to the coast it is not quite sunset uh, but as you are moving out of the coastline you can see cath the castle easily like 300 some feet up um looking down at you and then, uh, before you guys are able to get completely away, how do I change this? A cannon shoots. No, don't give him ideas. <laughs> A launching yeah. fireball goes arcing from one of the tower walls, coming around from the one of the courtyards, and starts can flying I, towards the boat. Can I missile it out of the air? Um, you can certainly try. It's a flaming sphere of uh, rock. Um, and then since you're being the first one, you can cast your magic missile and I will let you roll the d20 to attack the ship, but you can give it a minus two because of your spell. D20? So one d20 I, minus I, two. Should I, should I use my dice or the actual d dice roller? Um, which you can, which roll back? Your choice. Um, I will say that the ship's defense is a 14. So you have to roll above a 14. 13. 13. That so doesn't the, have a minus two, so it's a 13. So the so the um, the magic missile hits the bolt in the middle of the air right before it hits, and it just narrowly knocks it off course, and there's a big ocean spray as this fireball oh uh, hits the uh, waves next to you. Uh, did you have a question, Mackenzie? Uh, I wanted, hope to have a, hoped to have a reaction, but if it's okay. not well, on course, then... No, every, every player gets to roll this die. So on your turn, what is Hope doing as a, a second fireball launches over the walls? Um, Hope is going to look up, see it coming, and then she's going to look over at uh, Flora, give her a wink and take off running. And just before the impact, Hope is going to jump off, off the boat and ram into it and knock it off course and take it into the water. Okay, um, with that, because you're trying to do a headlong collision, um, gosh, because of the size of it, I will give it still, I think, only a minus two. I'm going to 1d20 minus two. Okay. Um, with Hope, she jumps off the boat, rams into it, and knocks it completely backwards into the water with a splash. What happens to Hope? Um, she, she would probably uh she would probably incinerate on impact okay so she is gone temporarily um corvantes will you or yeah. as a, a third fireball launches out from the uh distance of the ship 
With two successes, the armor of the ship goes up to a 15 as you're making more distance. Oh, jeez. Um, Corvantes will... What's the best thing you can do? <laughs> if nothing, you can just roll the dice. Um... Or if you want to pass your, if you want to pass the buck to a different player, you can do that as well. Everybody gets one roll. Corvantes will uh, use create water. I, I don't know if it's gonna do anything. You, he can't get a ton of force behind it, but he's gonna do that to at okay. least try to get a minus one, maybe. I will say that's fair. Dowsing the fire midair before impact will give you a minus one on the roll. Okay, I'm rolling this. Do you want me to roll in game or IRL? That's your choice. I'm gonna roll IRL. 18 with the mod. Okay, so that's a 19 minus one. Yeah. The I'm ship sorry. takes a fireball in the back of the ship uh, and it explodes into fiery splinters and smithereens. Uh, roll 1d10 for me, and if it's a 10, reroll. Uh, that's a five. Okay. Um, that is five of the sailors in the back are kind of knocked out you know, the boat and into the water and slain from the explosion. The boat lurches. It still is floating. Um, another fireball uh, comes launching out, and that will be either Great Nick Grace already went. So Avery or Flora? I mean, Avery is going to shove Corvantes out of the way and yell at him. Um, so Flora is going this, to... And I, can, I can make a bull rush attempt with the air that usually surrounds me, and I'm going to use that to push it away. Okay, so you're basically using uh, your sylph... What, what, what your race is a sylph? Yes. yes. Storm soul sylph. So you are able to use uh, kind of your racial ability to control the winds a little bit to try yeah, to burst it off. Once. So I will give you a minus one to the roll. The armor is still 15 for the ship. I guess I'll do that, 13. Okay. Um, the burst of wind is just enough to kind of have it sail over the bow of the ship just enough to miss and kind of crash into the waves behind you. Uh, and there's a big cascade of water spraying up. Um, Flora. One more fireball launches out. I don't have anything to try to stop it. Can I roll a knowledge of Arcana to think of something? Because I am I am proficient in that. Um, you can feel free to roll. Uh, it would be really up to your character sheet, what abilities or spells you can think to use. Otherwise, it's just a straight roll. That's a really good Arcana roll. So it's with funny. a with a twenty seven, you'll know that this is a catapult firing a fiery missile at you. Uh, can I daze it? I don't have any offensive spells. I just made to heal. Okay. If you want to roll the 1d20, it just would be a flat roll. Oh as my you god, are... I'm so scared. God. Okay. You are out of range and the catapult falls far and wide and splashes into the waves behind you. Your ship is half destroyed uh, and is taking on water. Uh, you've lost five of the crew, so there's now three sailors left, plus Tavish and yourselves. Uh, and it looks to be limping away from the castle, um, but it drops out of view behind you as you round the bend. Um, Tavish uh, is steering you to actually go um, either that'd be west or east. Did you want to go towards um, Belrock or Snakeport? I forget. Snake. Stay, stay snake port, yeah. Okay, so if that's the case, Whatever. you're actually, yeah, you're heading uh, east. You want to go to what's closer. <laughs> so that would be snake port. So the sun is beginning to fall in the sky. You can, you can hear the sounds uh, from the coast for a little bit of kind of shouts and almost like dogs barking and people kind of moving about as they're trying to follow along maybe from the coast a little bit but eventually it kind of dies out it seems like even with your your um damaged ship it's making good enough time tavish is extremely silent after that and very pale flora you can sense 
that he's filled with dread and fear. Um, and the ship is kind of letting in water from a crack of, uh, just over the aft of the ship where the sailors had been hit by the fireball. Uh, the few remaining ones are all kind of trying to guide the sail and stuff, but the ship does seem to be taking on water. What do you all wish to do? Laura's going to go try to comfort Tavish with a, a hug. My my ship, it's it's not even that. My crew, and and the castellan, he, he's gonna hang us all. What happened, Flora? What happened? Honestly, I'm still trying to figure that out myself. But contrary to all the spiky sensations from that encounter, the people here are really nice. I'm sure we'll find some kind of way to fix your boat. They're all really smart and strong and dependable. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And he asked we'll Tavish. Tavish kind of sinks down with his hands in his face and just kind of like, you comfort him a little bit. It's it's You can sense that it's refreshing for him to have someone be like a friend, but he's terrified of the future now. We can be future all we want, but right now we need to focus on the now. If we focus on the now and we do really well, the future shouldn't be a problem. Yesterday's history, tomorrow's a mystery, today is a gift, and that's why it's called the present. I'm going to go see if we can work on fixing the boat. <laughs> he, he chuckles and you bring a smile to Tavish's face for a moment. Um, yeah. Let me go ask the bigger people if there's anything we can do to fix it. I know I'm not good with my hands, but I'm sure I can think of something. And it looks like Grace is looking over, trying to see hope within the waves. Um, but yeah, poor Hope is, is miss missing in action. Flora is going to hug Grace as well. <laughs> I'm Grace. sorry about Hope. She did her best. It, it's, I, I know she did her best. She wouldn't make, she wouldn't make a judgment call if she didn't feel like it was a good choice, but I call her Hope for a reason. I can see why. If it helps, Hope winked before anything happened. So she knew what she, she, I think she knew what she, I think she felt like she knew what she was doing and was prepared to take a calculated risk of it meant saving all of us. That's, that's her for you. She kind of stops looking out deeply and looks down at Flora and there's like a, a small tear like going down her face and she's like, did I, did I ever tell you why I chose to call her Hope? Oh, please enlighten me. Well, with my kind of magic, you create what you create essentially what you want. And I knew that I wanted something that could be could protect a pack. So I went with a dog and my favorite color is black. And we have to have the matching symbols and she points to on her forehead where there was a red diamond on it. Um, any time that she summoned Hope, Hope had the same diamond on her forehead, and she's, red's my second favorite color. But I, I have always called her Hope because I like to think that when I developed my skills, it was my my last hope. It and sounds a bit paradoxical to say <laughs> that a hellhound gives hope, but I don't mind it. It's actually kind of she it gives me warm fuzzy feelings she starts laughing really hard and she goes a hellhound just because it's bigger than me and it's black does not make it a hellhound no it's just a personification of a giant dog well wolf if you want to get technical she's not a hellhound and she just starts laughing really hard and just crying because to her she know that she knows that hope's alive and that's okay, but the, the shock of, like, losing hope so fast, but knowing that she did it because she felt like it was right, is just exactly what Grace had developed hope to be. Flora's going to gently pat the top of Grace's head. I didn't mean to sound so moronic when I said that. 
<laughs> no, no. Most people don't know. Most people don't take the time to even listen to this story. So I, I appreciate you listening. But no, she, she is not a hellhound. She is not anything evil. She just happens to be a giant dog that I have 100% intention on writing and do because it's really fun. But it's just easier to deal with something that's four legs. Sorry, my favorite color is black. I know it gets confusing. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's entirely true. Whenever we see something black, we typically associate it with authority and in, and a very intimidating presence. So I understand. You want to you wanna exert an authority and strategy and respect whenever you get into a fight. Hope is a manifestation of that, and red is a color of passion. So you're a very authoritative, passionate, and ambitious person <laughs> well that and she she kind of puts uh puts a hand on flora's shoulder and gives her a smile and she goes a hope will always be my first and last line of defense because for me a hope is all i have and well, with that she will let go of flora's uh shoulder and walk away flora will look behind her as grace is walking away and look up at ellie ellie you're a grown-up. Do you know how we can fix the boat before we watch it slowly sink? Because I'm, as you put it, grown-up doesn't mean I know how to do stuff. Well, let, <laughs> I'm, so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Let, so let me rephrase that. You're objectively taller. Or is not as tall as you. Uh, wiser, wiser because you have more life experience. I'm sure if you could help me find things, we can patch the boat together. Yeah, I, I, I think the captain is the best person to ask for that, and no, I think we right, should try. Right now, Chavish is having a moment. He went from slimy weasel to a uh, mopey puppy. <laughs> oh, okay. More like a mopey mongoose, but I like puppies better than mongoose, so Flora shrugs. <laughs> Mongeese. Mon okay, okay, <laughs> Morvantes. Well, you're here. Do you think because you're so big and strong, Flora will try to like awkwardly flex, but she's not strong at all? You could help I fix the boat. I don't know where we got hit or how bad it is or if we're taking water a lot. Or yep, the the back of the boat is kind of splintered. The basically the back quarter panel is completely smashed over, and it's not quite enough to let like water immediately sink it but it's every time a wave hits it it takes in a couple more gallons of water it looks like a couple it's gonna, gallons or, or just a little bit of water like a couple gallons like it's it's not sustainable it will sink okay. if it doesn't get repaired okay on, we fix it i am um, yeah they well they try to well they try to fix it we need to buy time by getting water out at least um as this is is happening um so That'll buy us time, but we need to for sure fix this problem. Corvantes is doing... He, he's, he runs down to the crew and goes, All right, how do you fix it? Let's get on this. Whatever crew's uh, left. There are, there are three crew members, plus Damis and Tavish. So you, Tavish is basically not doing anything. He's kind of crying in a corner, essentially. Um, Yes, he's the Mopin Mongoose. But Damis is going to be there to assist you as well, even though he's kind of a, a thinly orc. Um, so you basically have a, a crew of four. Let's see if I can actually pull up a couple of sailors or something. Let's see. I, I would imagine there would be some sort of... Not repair kit, because it's hard to have a repair kit for a boat, but something, like, in case of emergency... Start putting these up. I would imagine it'd be something of that sort. Actually, you know, there were five killed, so there's three of them plus Damis. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there are a lot of the crates and stuff have already been offloaded, so the boat's fairly empty. But you can try to make do with what you can, kind of strip um, like the bench seats and stuff, and use those boards to try to repurpose them and hammer them in. Um, do you have any craft uh, skills? Uh, I have craft. Okay. So you may roll a craft check to try to repair the boat. Uh, meanwhile, if anybody else is can, wanting to help... Can, um, he, hmm? can he get a bonus if we assist? 
Um, that's what I'm about to ask. Is, oh, is there anything that you can... Oh, I also have craft. Yeah, so you can kind of come over. That actually will give a plus two bonus to the craft check. If anybody is wanting to maybe use a swim check to try to actually check for underwater damages below the waves, um, I would allow that. Anything else that you can think of uh, to creatively use a skill to assist? Can I also roll a craft check, or are we just going to stick with Corvantes's, which is a, a, a 19 with a, with assist? So I would say I if... Can, I can help out with the swim. Okay, you yeah, want to kind of I jump in and try to see from below the waves and see if there's additional damages down there? Uh, yeah, I will, okay. I will be using this because it's <laughs> that full. Um, but let's see how much I can get. Okay. okay so it's 14 base, uh, 18. Okay, so with a, both an 18 and a 19, um, the crafting is, is going very well. Actually, Flora has a really good eye for kind of pointing out where the uh, almost the boards like puzzle pieces can go. There's different lengths that you've been able to salvage from the benches and kind of hammering it in from different pieces. You're, you and Corvantes are able to kind of patch the back portion. It's definitely not repaired, but it's not bringing in as much water. If anything, you've reduced it to trickles. Meanwhile, Avery jumping uh, in. Go ahead. Um, no, go ahead. Okay, so Avery, uh, you jump underneath the, the water for a moment and kind of look and examine. It looks like the seams on the underneath of the ship in the back quarter panel is damaged as well, and it looks like it's not going to last for very many days, uh, if not hours. Um, it might be able to be easily repaired from being on land in a dry docks or, or a makeshift, but from underneath the, the boat, it's going to need some repairs as well. Do we level up at any point during the boat ride? Um, once you get to a, a camp, essentially. So you can decide on what to do. If you want to try to sail it as is for as long as you can, or do you want to try to... Because sorcerers over? do have the mending spell... Sounds like it a makes great one to get when you level up. On an object. And it's, yeah, so I'm, I'm wondering. Um... So at this particular moment, you have not had a chance to level up. Um, I will need to know if you want to push the ship, try to perform additional repairs in the water, or try to land and make camp or just make repairs and then what you want to do when I, when I get back up I will mention the the uh, final fracture in the ship Corvantes would ask does if it looks like to, to any of our knowledge do we think we can get there or do we need to stop somewhere first Flora would enter yeah. go ahead I agree I think Flora and have a clue as to how long it would take. So Snakeport is approximately 25 miles. So that would translate uh, for boat speed. Not that long. Not that long. No, not that long. Uh, depends, there's no wind. Oh, that's a good point. Um, you even rowing, still you the, can make that yeah. pretty quickly. I'm sure we could go faster than walking, and I can walk at four yeah. miles an hour. So. Yeah. Yeah. It also depends yeah. on water, water you, terrain and stuff like that. You would be able to attempt to push it if you wanted to. I I feel like logically it's better if we try to. I don't know where we are in relation, or in relation to shore, but Laura would want to fix a boat to try to get rid of any and all risks. Unless the party has something else to say otherwise about it. Or it doesn't want to risk anything. I do think we could make that. That's not that far. So it says a galley moves four miles an hour, so... Yeah, that yeah. could be hit, gotten in a day. Pretty much, yeah. If we were to go the full, like, day... Um nails to the wall if we just pushed it we could easily make it in a day six yeah. and a half hours <laughs> getting like a little bit of leeway yeah we could do that 
if the ship will be able to make it six hours, but it seems like it should last at least a day. Yeah. yeah. Well, if it's just a day, I'm sure we can get to shore in that time. I was worried that, that, that it was fatal and that we were in quite some danger. With the repairs, you think you've be. been able to prevent it from immediately sinkage, and then you can bail the water that's been pooling in the cargo hold. Um, you can yeah, try I'll to... help do that the entire time because I think they are doing a lot. Unless was I helping with repairing it? Because if not, I would have been helping with water. It makes sense for you to be working on the water, actually. Okay, yeah, I'll yeah. I'll just work on water. Um, did did outside of like losing the people who fell overboard? To confirm, they are dead, correct? Or are they just floating in the water? Um, that would be kind of, I guess, more of a perception check. They got, some of them for sure are dead, having been hit by it. Um, you can roll percentile dice for three of them, if you would like. Okay. So how many, just one percentile dice or three in total? Well, um... Let's just break it into percentages and just do one roll. So we'll break it into quarters. Low is bad, so if you were less than 25, all are dead. And then every 25 increment, you get to keep one extra sailor, and they can get recovered. Okay. Well, well, well. I think you brought back to life the one that we thought okay. was dead. Okay, hear me out, because I want to do this with some flair, DM, if I can. May I please do this with some flair, because I never thought I'd roll a 100 in my life. Go ahead. Okay, um, I want to, like, we're out in the ocean. Is there by chance a dolphin around? Sure. Awesome. I'm going to use Speak with Animals, and I'm going to ask the dolphin to bring back the survivors. Okay. The dolphin uh, comes back one at a time, uh, and at this point, the crew is getting is kind of working on recovering it. But Don't you dolphins travel in groups, so you find a group of dolphins and they all just take the sailors one at a time. We're like in pairs back to the ship. There, <laughs> there were eight crew members. One even you thought got hit when he gets brought back by the dolphins. He's got tremendous injuries and bludgeoning, but he was able to almost like jump over the side as it got hit. And then the force of the uh, meteor, or not the meteor, the uh, the catapult rock hit the ship first and kind of skid across the deck and took out a big chunk of the, the whole thing. He got caught in it, but his legs are all like messed up. But the dolphin brings him back and he is just simply unconscious and uh, he's able to be revived. All eight of the crew members are here. So actually, that's not there. Can I hex anybody that looks injured? Yes, um, the one that should have died by everything except the hundred. Um, you can uh, you can try to heal him. His leg is broken, probably at least. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna get healed with just a base heal spell, but you can yeah. uh, you can revive him, and then he can get basically a splint to put on it and um he's probably not going to be rowing but you have extra help between everybody else in the party so flora will look at the man with the broken leg and tell him you're very resilient like a weed but not an annoying weed a really pretty weed that you want to keep alive <laughs> he he seems a little delirious and sputtering up water still a little bit <coughs> Thanks, little girl. You're welcome. Uh, you should you, you shouldn't exert too much on this leg. Just take take it easy for the day. We should be in snake hole soon. Tavish is amazed watching as one by one his crew, who he thought was dead, is being brought back by these sea animals, these dolphins, um, and they kind of talk with Grace uh, a little bit at a time before they jump back into the water and kind of make their way off. Um, but you are a friend of the dolphins, and Tavish kind of nods to you with, res with respect. Um, meanwhile, the, the ship has been repaired enough to try to limp um, the way back to the snake port, which is kind of 
in the smuggler isles it's kind of more of a piratey town um and the ship is definitely a, uh an eyesore with the damage it's taken but you are able to limp your way back and by sundown you see this the uh, port town uh, arriving and with the full crew or enough people plus damis um in those six to eight hours of of sailing um what is everybody doing is anybody resting or all kind of working hard to keep the ship going? I'm Vermontus. having quite the workout right now. I have nothing to add to this, so I may actually have fallen asleep. Flora is, uh, um, despite not being very physically being very physically endowed to help, is trying to help wherever she can. And uh, she's, she's just doing any and every little small task anybody needs, like, like they need like food, or they need help carrying something, or not even need help carrying something. She's there to just lend an extra pair of hands. Absolutely. Rontus would, um, he would help like some of the sailors with the rowing, etc. Um, and he'd also be uh, saying prayers to his god. Um, just be like, hey, uh, that was kind of rough. You, if you can give us a hand getting to this next place, I would be very appreciative, and I'll keep spreading your word. Okay. You feel a slight connection uh, to your deity, which, can you remind me his name? Aurori. Aurori. Uh, and you can you can feel, rather than hear, you just kind of feel a presence of Aurori. And um, Aurori negates the percentile dice chance of anything else happening and you are safely escorted by your god to Snakeport. Anybody else have anything you want to do on the journey? Grace is helping keep keep water out of the boat and just breathing a, breathing a sigh of relief and any time she hears a, a dolphin cry, she runs to the edge of the ship and looks out and whether it was one of the dolphins she communicated with or not, she would just give it like a very like happy wave before going back to work, but yeah. Okay, perfect. So everybody um, is kind of weary and worn. The port city kind of looms ahead in the distance, kind of uh, outlined with, by the sunset. And, and as the boat kind of crawls up to the wharf, um, Tavish kind of steps out first and greets. Um, there's an elf a high elf, actually, it looks like, kind of with kind of very bronze skin and golden hair. Uh, and they speak uh, at the docks for a little bit. Um, there's a coin that kind of changes hands, and then the, the boat is directed to be moored at one of the piers, uh, not one of the main ones, but off to the side. And uh, Tavish jumps back in the boat, and he says, All right, snake port. If we, uh, if we don't get hanged, uh, I believe you owe me... Uh, some some gold. I did it again. I'm sorry. I forgot to mute. <laughs> Corvantes Cor uh, would hand him twenty five gold and um, get right up to him and go. I'm so sorry about your crewmates about your ship. I hope the little bit extra helps. Rule for me a diplomacy check plus four. Uh, okay. That's a 19 plus 2 plus 4, so that's a total of a 25. He takes the 20 gold, or 25 gold, and kind of counts it down, and then he hands you 15 gold back, and he says, I might be a gypsy, but I'm not going to gyp you that bad. If, uh, if we can all lay low, maybe the Castellan will, will forget about all this. Uh, it's not like we killed any of his... These guards, we just sunk a ship. I think uh, maybe I'll just hang out here in the, in the smuggler's house for a couple weeks or a month, maybe a couple moons. Uh, maybe we'll be okay, but uh, be gone. <laughs> I don't want to see you again. Take that in the kindest way that you can. Um, I guess. Uh, at this point, I mean, Laura's become attached to Grace and Corvantes and everyone. 
I don't know if Tavish would want Flora to leave as well. This is true. Ta um, for Flora, he being kind of the part of the gypsy kind of crew, he would be fine with Flora staying, but all of the all the chaotic visitors uh, or people that he who took a ride on his ship, he's not thrilled with hanging around. Um, that could be changed if you want to talk to him in a certain way, but he, he basically disperses his crew. Um, he pays them their wages early, and it's basically getting rid of his ship, it sounds like. Tavish, can I borrow if, you for a moment? If I have a chance to level up and do mending on a ship, I would do so. Um... Yep, um, you all get to level up as soon as you kind of take a rest, whether you want to take a, get to an inn, or if you want to set up camp outside of um, the port, um, or what you would like to do. Um, I would talk to the guy. If he doesn't want it, I would I would offer, say, I, I could do some, some magic, uh, magic mending on your ship. Um, however, I'd, I'd have to take a rest, which is why I haven't done it yet. Um, but I'd, I'd have to take a rest. So whether that's sleeping in, in an available bunk on your ship or going and coming back, I would do that for you if you wanted it. Well, I, I'm going to have to get rid of the ship. The, the, way, the Castellan will know of my dealings in my ship, and if, uh, it's best just to let it go at this point. I will... I'll, well, a fixed ship sells for better. He, uh, his eyes kind of brighten for a second. He kind of taps his nose. I think you have a mind for this business. Here, tell you what. <laughs> um, maybe we could partner. Uh, F Flora. And he points over to uh, the little tiefling. Uh, what were you wanting to say to him? Uh, Flora's going to listen to this conversation for a second. It can wait. What is it, Tavish? <laughs> Do you, I don't really want to bring them to um, the, the caravan, but maybe we can find an inn here. Do you, do you know of anyone, any inns in this region that we can stay at maybe uh, and try to lay low for the day? And you can roll uh, your history. Actually, no, you already rolled the history. Uh, and you rolled, what, like a 19 or 20? A 27. Okay. Um, I think so it was yeah, so you, you can know that there's a tavern here um, called Snake Eyes, and that is kind of very popular. And because of the the port town is kind of outside of the White Cliff region, um, it's even if he does send guards here, they're not really going to have authority to try to arrest anybody. So you can um, you can try to go to the inn, the Snake Eyes inn, or if you wanted to actually go to the Gypsy Hold, where the of the caravan is staying uh, over in this area, you could do that too. And then go ahead, well, Grace. Well, well, Mr. Tavish, I do think that it makes sense to do either of those things because as we are out of White Castle territory, they don't really have the authority here to assert their authority over us for whatever reason. I don't know what any of them did, but they're not bad people. On the one hand, you could go back to Caravan, but there is a, there is an inn in town called Snake Eye Inn, which we could go stay at as well. Either way, it would be good for all of us to get arrested. So, speaking of the Snake Eye, um, Avery has already started walking off towards the city, or the, the, stat, the settlement, and she, like, turns around and starts walking backwards and says, I'm not much of a team person, but I like all of you. Especially the one that called me a dragonfly. That was kind of cool. I'll be at the snake eye. Goodbye. Flora looks in that direction and gets a smell. Mr. Tavish, do you think if I left anybody in the caravan would miss me? Well, we we all come and I come and go. The gypsies always have a, a home for all, all the little ones, whether it's you or me when I was your age. We always have a place, but people don't always stay there. That's kind of our nature. So, well, yeah, Sando. I I kind of want to go with them, 
And there's nothing against you, Mr. Tavish, with you and your weaselly mongoosey ways. It's just that I want to go he spend found. time and see the world. I mean, I'm, I'm 39. I feel like it's time for me to go out there and try to make a name for myself the way you have. Well, then go, get off to it. <laughs> you like, shall emotions you shall, shoot. Shall hug Tavish. I'm never going to forget you, Mr. Tavish, and I hope our paths cross again one day. Thank you for everything you taught me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not too soon. Don't get yourself killed or hung. Be careful of strangers and don't be afraid to cheat the wrong people. I the right people. Carbon, I don't think Carbontes is going to let me get into trouble. Or Grace. Or Ellie. I don't know about the Dragon of Light Avery, but I'll do my very best. So, uh, have so much fun with Laura. Uh, Damis kind of tips his hat if he has one. I'm sure he's actually acquired a tricorn hat from the sailors, just a loose one lying around. Tips it, and he just says, "Well, if it's all the same to you, I shall be off. Um, I bid thee good day and uh, good luck, and uh, sayonara." And he leaves. Corvantes would kind of look to him and look to everybody and just go, you guys are awesome. Don't ever stop being you. And Corvantes, he looks over at Grace and goes, sorry about your pop. Take care. And he will kind of walk off and kind of find a spot to sit down and pray and kind of do his own thing. I, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Flora. No, you go ahead, Grace. Okay, Grace will just give a, a nod of thanks to Gorgontis and then she'll actually turn to Flora and say, so am I understanding that you don't intend on staying with Tavish? Well, it's like I told Tavish, I'm 39 years old. I should really get out there and make a life for myself, shouldn't I? You're I'm simply an adult. <laughs> You're 39, the 22-year-old gnome says. Well, yes, because you see, in in, in teething years, I'm still kind of a child. I'm not, but when I turn 40 is when adulthood happens and everything is really crazy. But I'm not even close to adulthood. Okay, I mean, I am, but still. Let's not talk about what happens in adulthood because I am not personally prepared to have that conversation. But... <laughs> From the from the skills that you've shown me throughout our time together, both here and in the past, I would like to ask you to come with me. Um, I feel like I feel like we could all really benefit from someone like you in our group. Uh, I do that. I wanted to go with all of you. I think it'd be a lot of fun to go out there and make a name for myself and glow stuff. She'll pull out her little bird that's always really quiet. Seems to agree. <laughs> I'm so glad that you and Glossa agree. Um, I'm not too sure if everyone else would want to join, and I'm not sure if I can vouch for everyone else. Uh, that you know, everybody Plus, seems to pretty be... eager too. Like, like eager, 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 but like dragonfly eager, like flying everywhere. Here's here's the thing. If we do go there. Uh, first of all, you all have to be blindfolded uh, when we get to a certain point. After that, it's not my decision whether you can stick or not. I can only vouch for you. Okay. If you are chosen not to stay, we will re-blindfold you and I'll lead you back to the location where I blindfold you guys at. But understand that uh, once you're in, you're in. All right. I don't fully understand. It's kind of like there's this weird gray fog all around you, but all right. Everything's in shades of gray, my dear. But what we're doing is for the best, and unfortunately, it takes a certain group of people to right the wrong. And that's where I'm at. So if you want to come along, you can. Okay. Ellie. I started ignoring them whenever um, whenever uh, Grace said some 
thing about conversations of adulthood at that point i i was like okay i'm gonna talk to the captain and confirm i don't know how well i can fix the ship but i'll do my best and i'll see him tomorrow morning to do that maintenance <laughs> I, I'll, I'll talk more with i'll talk more with ellie and at the hotel the, with the dragonfly at the uh, you're cute if you think i have money uh, all my money oh. went to paying Tavish to get this oh. right. Oh, Grinch, that reminds me. The funniest thing. I don't know if you were looking. Flora pulls out a giant sack of 100, 100 gold coins. I found this when we were over at Whitecliff. Would this be helpful? Yes, very. It would be nice to actually sleep on a bed tonight. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> we can all go get rooms together. Yes, I will, I will gladly room with you, Flora. Yay! Well, let's go join the. What was the firefly's name again? First of all, dragonfly. Fireflies are really bright and bring joy. The dragonfly is just busy buzzing about doing whatever she wants. Also, her name is Avery. Avery. All right. Well, uh, Miss Ellie, she yes? was one of the few people I was actually introduced to. Um, what do you say we? What do you say we head to the inn? Let's get some food. Let's sit down and uh, let's talk and see if my business proposition is anything that you would be interested in. Sounds good. Are you um, coming, Teddy Bear? Corvantes has kind of already left, and oh. I I would love to continue playing in this campaign, but if we're going with Grace. There is no way in any of the nine hells Corvantes would. <laughs> there is there is not a possible. It's not a even a nat one hundred wouldn't make him at this point. Um, so if you would allow me, I would love to come back in with a new character who would Absolutely. be willing to. For sure, um, Corvantes. That's, that's really uh, tempting, actually. Pie. Flora really tempting. Remember our alphabet scheme. Yeah, alphabet rule. Flora, if I'm going to make one that starts with Z. No. <laughs> no, we'll have okay, to kill you. Noah, Noah yeah, exactly. for the you sake of story, die. for the sake of story, can Flora have at least said goodbye because Flora really liked Corvantes even though he tried for the first time they met. Cor Corvantes would, would have given you a hug if you would have asked for one. Flora will hug you and say, I'm going to you big old teddy bear. Believe it or not, <laughs> you're like one of the few people who was like, I don't mind this kid. All right, we're fine with this. <laughs> uh, but but he needed to go and have some time to recuperate himself after seeing a fellow follower of Arori just have her throat slit in front of him. He's not doing okay from that. Avery, are you having good dreams over there? So the, the camera would kind of fade out on Corvantes' back after a kind of a kind of unspoken hug between Flora and, and Corvantes, and you kind of collect your staff and your, your Warhammer, rather, and begin to make your way down into, it's now twilight at this point, and you disappear into the crowd of this port city, and Corvantes uh, steps away. Huzzah. Who's so, that bad? <laughs> is, this, is this to say, Grace, that we're now in a traveling group of really pretty ladies because Domus and Corvantes aren't here anymore? Well, it, it it all depends on if everybody decides to come along. But you and I are at least a beautiful traveling duo. However, uh, Miss Ellie, if you will please take Miss Flora to the uh, to the inn I have somebody I need to talk to and then I will be uh, I will be right there see you at the snake eyes great oh and please for the love of God order me a beer I will order one for each of us thank you oh, and a steak. I mean... oh that sounds interesting okay so Ellie and Flora begin to follow uh, after follow back uh, up the streets, walking, making your way up towards the Snake Eyes. Flora, you know where it is, so it's not difficult for you to kind of almost lead Ellie. Uh, Avery has already gone there, spoken with the innkeeper, 
I found a room for the night. And for Avery, uh, your head touches the pillow, and unless you say to the contrary. Wait. Oh, that's exactly what happens. Yep. You are out, completely zonked out. Um, Ellie and Flora walking down the, the street. It's dusk, it's dark out. The street lamps are all very yellow, causing a, a kind of warm, almost eerie glow down the streets. You see a lot of kind of cutthroats and shady characters kind of just watching you from the sides, but you just kind of keep walking purposefully and they don't bother you. Um, you make it to the inn. And then the camera would shift back to Grace at the docks. And what do you do, Grace? Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to make my way to uh, one of the doors that's on the docks. Okay. And as you are making your way past this, these bales of netting and fishing supplies and passing these these uh, cogs and, and ships and little dinghies that are all tied together in a very close proximity, uh, the wood bumping together is making frequent groans and creaks. Um, the dwarf kind of lifts off his, uh, his hat for a moment and kind of eyes at you and just kind of there's an unspoken silence as you are looking at each other. Um, and the camera fades out to black. And that is where we shall end tonight's session. And now so. is when I meant to say huzzah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to end it like after you guys left and it all split. I kept like, at what point is this ending? I feel like, you're like when do I huzzah? Yeah, now, now, is, now works. Um, everybody will be able to take a rest and level up to level two. Guess who's going to be a better healer now? I am. Yeah. That is, uh, that's where we shall pause. And then we shall begin chapter two of the White Cliff game, which is now completely homebrewed to my preference. So... Um, I wish you end the stream, uh, the recording rather, and uh, we will see you all in the next game. Yep. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.